Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, I saw Doug DeMiro's uh, review of the R8, and I know that uh, he doesn't actually own one, but I do. So uh, I think it's about time that I do the review of my R8 and uh, let you kind of know what kind of it's like having one. So uh, just to give you the rundown, this is a 2008. Uh, it had 23,000 miles uh, when I got it, and it um, had three things done to it. The previous owner had powder coated the wheels, which I really like. Uh, he powder coated the uh, brake calipers, which I thought was pretty cool. And then uh, the uh, aftermarket exhaust, if you can't already hear it, is also done too. So I don't know if I love it or if I hate it, but I'm, it's growing on me. It's really starting to grow on me. So let's start by talking about the big kind of elephant in the room, which is the R-Tronic transmission. I got mine with the R-Tronic. The requirement that I had for my next car was going to be that it had to be drivable by both myself and my wife. And my wife, she can drive a stick, she just doesn't like to. So it needed to be drivable by both of us. That's where the R-Tronic came in. The Artronic and the manual share the exact same transmission. The only difference is the Artronic has a hydraulic actuated clutch, clutch mechanism, so I'm not the one kind of doing the clutch bit. Um, so there, there's that. Driving an Artronic means you've got to learn a new way of kind of driving. And what do I mean by when I say that? The car automatically downshifts. See, it's already doing it. I'm not touching a thing. There are two ways you shift. Uh, one way is the selector here, and then the other way is the, the flappy paddles, as uh, Clarkson kind of uh, coined uh, pretty well. Uh, so what happens is you automatically downshift as you come to a stop, and the issue is, is that it wants to put you in second for whatever reason, and guys were burning out their clutches because they thought, oh, I'll put it in second, I'll be nice to it. Well, the problem is, is the computer confuser gets all messed up and wants to slip the clutch too much, and guys are burning out their clutches at 15,000 miles. So uh, you have to learn to when you get down to about parking lot speed, you throw it into first gear, and then you, once you get up to speed, then you can shift into second gear, but do not move it out of first gear, otherwise you're gonna be slipping it way too much. All right, so this is one of those situations where I have to manually put it in first gear and then slowly creep up in traffic, otherwise, it wants to keep me in second gear, and I don't know why that is. So I manually have to put it every single time in first gear, then go. It's it's just a process you have to get used to. Second thing is kind of understanding kind of how this all works together. Uh, right around 3,000 RPM is you know if I'm going for a lazy drive, the car the car has a couple kind of quirks that I, I find interesting. One is the sport mode you have to click on every single time you get in the car. I have no idea why this car has the option of turning that off. Sport, non-sport mode is a complete waste of time. It doesn't, it, it just lazily shifts. I mean, you can almost feel it, you can, you can feel it shift. It's, it's, it's god awful, so I don't even know why they have it. They also have MagRide on by default. Again, I don't know why you'd want to turn that off. It makes no sense. I do have two other complaints, and to be honest, they're a bit nitpicky. One, you can see it down here, the AC button. I cannot see it through this shifting like, uh, mechanism here. So, literally the button, I can't see if it's on or off, so I literally have to move my head this way. Okay, fine, you got me nitpicky. The other thing that is kind of a, a drag are the rear view, the uh, uh, visors. So sun's in my eyes, oh, I'm so blind, oh, I'm blind, oh. Let me just take care of that. Much better. Yeah, totally, yeah, okay. So let's talk about a couple other things that, that are kind of nitpicky. The car does not have Bluetooth. Okay, 2008, all right, fine. It does not have an iPod or a uh, USB connector. It just doesn't. Uh, it does not have a way for me to hook up my phone 
through the audio jack with an iPod or my phone uh, to the car. For whatever reason, this version didn't have them. Uh, some of the other versions did, the, the later ones did, and you know, kind of a bummer that I didn't, I didn't get one. But you know, such is life. It's a hundred dollar add-on if I want to go in and get a part and plug it in. Not a huge deal. Other nitpicky thing is there's a phone connector right here, which coincides with the telephone button. But of course, that's only used with one phone that was made in 2008, and of course, 2008 phones are still around. So. I've got it in manual mode, which means I do the shifting, and I've got it in sport, which means it's going to shift good for me, or more positive anyway. Not bad. And I have noticed that it does matter where your foot is on the throttle, because if you do not give it a lot of gas, it will not shift super hard. But as soon as you plant it, man, that thing shifts like crazy. Coming up to a uh, small roundabout here, and I will show you what that's all about. The other thing is if you do not engage launch control, this thing has absolutely no go to it between like idle and 3500 RPM. Absolutely no no go whatsoever. But once you get above four, five grand, holy hell, everything livens up and it's awesome. So, again, there, there's four modes, you know, uh, non-mag ride, no sport, automatic, worthless. I don't know why anybody would even bother. Then, the good way to drive it, mag ride on, sport mode, and manual, which is I'm driving in now. So, let me just kind of show you. Downshift, fourth gear. Ah, oh, this is the part that I love about this car. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, God, so much grip. It's so wide. Oh, it's such a wide car. Here we go. Here we go. Yes! Get some! <laughs> and that's why I love this car! Woo! Woo! Did you feel this shit? Did you see how quickly that shifted? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, goosebumps. Oh! Oh, it's not the fastest car I've ever owned, but it is certainly the most fun. Oh my god, that's fun. Oh, uh, okay, while I'm while I'm out of my drunken stupor here, uh, <laughs> this car has things that I, um, I've never had in a car before, like a, a radio. Uh, maybe we'll get a good channel. Uh, uh. Okay, alright, failed experiment. Uh, the other thing it has that I really enjoy is the thing I complained about in the beginning, which is, it's got AC. Okay. I haven't had a car that, had to, that has had AC before, so, uh, you know, I'm, I feel spoiled. This is great. I love it. So, uh, the things that I dislike about the car are just so small. Um, it's, a, it's The car's black, obviously, uh, from outside and inside, and I, I, while I love the color scheme, it is the, be it is the best and worst of both worlds. It's... it's extremely good looking it's a sexy looking car it it looks just perfect for a 10 year old car looks absolutely amazing um even when the spoiler goes up and down that doesn't ruin the lines at all it's just actually i think the spoiler helps quite a bit which is why i think they put the spoiler on the new ones which looks excellent um it is also the worst thing in the world because driving a black car attracts every minuscule speck of everything and it just drives me insane how much I have to clean this car. Is it worth it? It's 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 a it's a good looking car, so I, I I do have to admit the black is absolutely perfect. You will still get stares and still get looks and thumbs up from people who, who yep, so, <laughs> hey cool. Just got somebody just took a picture. See that? Oh, there they are. Hey. But anyway, this is the cool stuff that I like. It's it's not overwhelming. You guys watched me build the SLC, uh, which had AC but no radio. Uh, and I got ridiculous amounts of attention. I couldn't go anywhere without, you know, a 40-minute conversation about what is it, what transmission is it, what frame is it, da 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 da, da. Right. And everybody thought for some reason it had a Volkswagen frame on it. I had no idea why. But this car, it's about subtle 
attention, which is cool because people appreciate it and kind of know it for what it is. Nobody really knows that, you know, not everybody knows it's a, there's Lamborghini bits in the bottom, but that it's all Audi on top, which is why it convinced me to, to pick this up. Cool Lamborghini stuff underneath, all refined Audi on top. And that's what I love about it. Hey, look, one of, one of my brothers. Same thing, Volkswagen, uh, you know, like, yep, this guy. So anyway, I love this car. Tw I, I, I put 20, I've got 25,000 miles on it. I've driven about 2,500 now. And I do absolutely love this car. Is it the most perfect car? No, it's a bit down on power. It's the slowest car I've ever owned at 420, 430 horse. Done a couple things to it. I'm not really expecting a whole lot of extra horsepower, but um, you know, in 2008, that was a lot. Now, not so much. Although, what it makes up for in straight line speed, as you saw, you come out of the hole, you're, the, the car is so wide and has such grip that you can come out of that, you can come out of a turn at a million miles an hour, mash the pedal, and because of the four wheel drive, it just disperses the power into every single wheel perfectly, and you look, you look like a superstar. So, uh, man, I, I really do love this car. Um, and it, 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 like I said, you put the pedal to the floor, you shift it, and you heard it just what? And I just love that. I got to get goes with the whole deal. So anyway, I love this car. Is it the perfect car? No. no. Uh, is it really great? Yeah. Is it the bargain kind of the, the, the you know it's kind of the bottom bargain supercar? Uh, you know, right now, yes, this is the bargain supercar of the year. And, and I and I know people are saying, oh, it's not really a supercar, it's only got a V8, blah, 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 blah. It's a supercar. Guarantee you, go anywhere, people will look and go, that's a damn nice car. So anyway, thanks for joining me. This was a hell of a lot of fun. I gotta get to go where I'm going. You guys have a good time. Th thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a good one. So yeah, thought of a couple other things. The trunk... Tiny, don't even bother. Although I, I've heard you can get matching luggage that will fit in the trunk that's like four thousand bucks. Uh, I'm good, I'll work with a duffel bag. Secondly, uh, I was watching a review before I bought this car and somebody said, Oh, you know, you can get, you know, a set of golf clubs uh, back here in this little package tray thing. Um, there's about six inches of room, so I don't know who the hell he was playing golf with, but uh, certainly wasn't a an adult size of golf clubs. Um, I, if you want the V10, you're going to spend another 25 grand. And the V10, while it is brilliant, um, wasn't worth 25,000 bucks to me. Uh, everything that I had read, you know, top years reviews, you know, road drive, you know, car driver, all those things had said the V8 was if you were a driver, that's the car you want because it, it is hand, it, the, the weight is distributed perfectly and it's less of a supercar showy V10, look at all the power I've got, and more of a driver's, you know, kind of car. Other kind of interesting fact about the car, it's got a dry sum system. So it takes about, you know, eight to nine quarts of oil, which is, you know, two regular oil changes for a normal car. And it's got three drain plugs. That's right, three. And they're all at this kind of weird, funky angle uh, in there. And that only only gets you a quart out of the uh, dry sump part anyway. So, uh, you know, the, the things that I do love, I really outweigh the whole car, let's be honest. Okay, sorry, things keep coming to mind. One thing uh, that, that came to mind immediately uh, was the gas mileage. This thing has a huge, number one, huge fuel tank. And secondly, it's almost 24 gallons. And secondly, I'm averaging, and mind you, I'm not super nice to it all the time. Although, if you are super nice to it all the time, you will get rough 22 miles to the gallon, which is pretty good. Um, you know, I'm averaging about 18, so, you know, I'm having a little bit more fun with my uh, fuel economy, but, um, you know, it, it's practical in, in that respect. Um, you know, the repair costs on these things are, you know, some of the lowest of the, you know, kind of supercar market. And you're going to find that, you know, people who own these tend to really enjoy them. If they move up, they go up to something big like a Lamborghini or something super, you know, crazy out there. Uh, but I have noticed that you know, watch some of the forums and you read all the, you know, what people are saying. And most people, you know, trade up. They don't get rid of them very often. 
there were only, you know, not a, not a ton of these made, um, which makes it kind of rare and kind of cool in that respect. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people aren't really selling them, and the value of them so far, you know, 10 years seems to be the magic, magic number for cars to depreciate before they kind of level off. And, you know, the, this car, uh, I didn't find the window sticker, but, uh, you know, I could estimate right around $115,000, $120,000 brand new. I picked it up for, you know, a little over half that. And, uh, you know, that seems to be the bottom. So they're really kind of holding value. Uh, a couple of things, I, you know, Alcantara, Alcantara uh, suede um, roof liner is cool. I've got the, it's got a Valentine uh, V1. Uh, radar system. I don't. I don't use it, uh, but it's you know front and back, which is kind of neat. Um, kind of some other things. Uh, it's got the carbon side blades. Um, it's got the BNO stereo in here, um, and and this is my favorite part. The VIN number, the last three digits, or last four digits, are zero eight eight eight. I thought that was pretty cool. 